Tamriel Rebuilt is well known for its gorgeous cities and epic landscapes, but one of its best qualities, in my opinion, are exceptionally well written quest lines. From the moment we step into the mainland and interact with its inhabitants, I have special prices just for you today. It becomes clear that this isn't just some random mod. Tamriel Rebuild's storytelling maintains that familiar and unique Morrowind's flavor. Dialogues still make us feel like an outlander, a stranger in a strange land, often focusing on the land and its rich history. This is something I love the most about Morrowind, especially compared to the other Elder Scrolls games. The weird and alien atmosphere, the strangeness of it all. So, as I explored the west lands of Morrowind's mainland, I played through many memorable quests. And today I want to talk about one particular quest in Tamriel Rebuilt. It's one of those storylines that, once you are introduced to them, grab all of your attention. It has all the fine alchemical ingredients of a certified quality quest. Variety of locations to explore, a mystery to solve, unique items including one of the most powerful weapons, mini bosses, quirky characters, history behind it, even a twist at the end. It's like a full package delivered at your door without even expecting it. I'm really excited to talk about, so let's just begin. My name is Alec and this is a story of a lost champion, Constantius. One of my favorite quests in Tamriel Rebuilt. So here we are again in Old Ebonheart, seat of the Imperial power in Morrowind. To begin, we will head to the Fighters Guild and join them. Their guild hall is located in a plaza next to the Grand Chapel of Talos. And while here, I just want to point out that Tamriel Rebuilt really did some justice to the Fighters Guild by designing a truly epic headquarter. Compared to the mostly cramped and austere guild halls on Vardenfell, Old Ebonheart's guild hall reflects the true strength and size of this prominent, highly organized faction. And being placed in the plaza reserved only for the most important buildings is a proof in itself of faction's outstanding reputation. So anyways, the actual story of lost hero Constantius is hinted even before we officially set on a journey to find his remains. You see, at the beginning of the Fighters Guild questline, Foedus Locutius, a relatively low-ranking member of the guild, will send us on a seemingly ordinary quest to kill some rats. How thrilling! In a quest called More Rats, which is a sort of a joke referencing a first quest for the guild we do back on Wardenfell, we pay a visit to Aurelia Draconis, a wealthy imperial living just down the road. Ah, greetings. What shall we talk about? Now, Foedus will comment about Aurelia's sanity, or the lack of. Evidently, Aurelia keeps contacting the guild on a daily basis with a number of irritating tasks, including killing rats. And even though there is something obviously wrong with her, it's generally ignored because of her wealth and status. Aurelia will indeed complain about the rats in her back room, however, we will soon discover that it's actually a hungry whelk that's been making all the noise. Aurelia will then admit to having an actual whelk as a pet, using her nectar to sweeten the tea. And all because some merchant named Ginur Dolwi raised the prices. So naturally, we are then offered a choice between simply paying Aurelia to get rid of her pet or visit Ginur Dolwi and see what it's all about. I decided to visit the trader. It's a good excuse to have a nice walk outside the city and visit a small village of wool. Ginur can be found on the street as he is a small-time independent trader, meaning he is not a member of a local merchant tongue or guild that thrives on swindling outlanders. Talking to Ginur will actually reveal some information on Aurelia and the local lore. It turns out that Aurelia is frequently using Vax nectar supplied to her by Ginur until he raised the price. This caused her to literally steal a Velk all for herself. Now, the catch is that Velk's nectar, especially in a fermented form known as Punavit, is highly illegal and reserved only for Indoril nobility. It has a ritualistic purpose, allowing the user to summon and communicate with ancestors. And with Aurelia going all nuts and having a living Velk in her house could easily put both her and Ginnor in a very bad situation, to say the least. House Inderil doesn't play around and takes its customs very seriously, so Ginner could easily be executed for smuggling Punavit. So it's even funnier that once we agree to help Ginner resolve the situation, he will gift us 
a whole jug of Punavit, thus again committing basically a same crime. I guess once a smuggler always a smuggler, but in any case, with the situation under control and noisy Valk removed from Aurelia's home, we can return to Fuedus for the reward. And what a reward that is. Behold, a mighty rat smasher. It's actually a really cute blunt weapon with miserable stats. My guess it's a joke, but hey, it's a unique item and definitely a worthy addition to player's treasury. However, this isn't the end of Aurelia's role in today's story. You see, Foedius will immediately receive yet another letter from her, this time complaining about seeing a ghost. Foedius will genuinely worry about Aurelia, especially about her mental health, and will tell us to check her out and make sure she's okay. Once we return to her house, we will in fact find a real and quite confused ghost. It seems that he is somehow summoned inside the house and suspects that it's due to the use of sacred nectar. I love the fact that we can choose between talking and fighting the ghost for no reason. In my case, I chose the diplomatic approach and ghost will politely suggest bringing Aurelia to local Indoril lord in Dondril due to her great potency in spirit channeling. So it seems that all along the root of Aurelia's strange behavior and apparent insanity is her inborn talent or let's say a gift in channeling spirits. And drinking the sacred nectar Punavit only magnified this ability to the point that ghosts kept randomly spawning all around her. We now have to escort her to the town of Dondril, which lies, again, not very far from old Ebonheart. In my opinion, Aurelia is at a point where she really needs some serious help and it's probably best for her to be taken there anyways. Along the way, she will occasionally provide a funny meta comment, making the journey at least somewhat more enjoyable. Upon arriving, Aurelia will thank us and say the following curious line. Well, I finally made it. Constantius, how nice of you to show up. This is the first time that the name of Constantius is mentioned. And at this point, we expect it to be yet another nonsensical silly line by a mentally unstable woman because, well, there's no one around named Constantius. In fact, Aurelia will expand on this, saying that it's her ancestor who used to be a great warrior and that he mentions a place called Manumnabi, even though she has no clue what does it mean. So we are left with this piece of information. Aurelia will remain with the Inderil and we can return to Old Ebonheart. Now, the quest for Constantius isn't available until we rise in ranks. Upon reaching the rank of a swordsman, we are finally able to receive orders directly from Sharnoga Gramal, an aged orc crusader and a guardian of the fighters guild. Lately she's been going through some old cases and her main quest line concerns the mysterious disappearance of a legendary hero, Constantius. Old and wizened Sharnoga spends her days reading books and she became fascinated with a long lost hero, who according to the legend disappeared somewhere in the Morrowind. In fact, here's what she has to say. I was clearing out some of our old contracts and found one that predates even my career here. An influential family paid us a large amount of gold up front to retrieve the remains of their ancestor, Constantius, who is believed to have died centuries ago somewhere in Morrowind. We must also attempt to determine how he died. No one thus far has been successful. But if you can find anything from him, we might be able to solve this. Start by checking caves and tombs on the river Tyr. As soon as we hear the name Constantius, we can tell Sharnoga about Aurelia Draconis and her vision of Constantius. And this is the moment when things become much more clear. Aurelia's visions were indeed real. Constantius is indeed her ancestor. And looks like the location by the name of Manumnabi offers a clue to whatever happened to him. Needless to say, Sharnoga will be euphoric, especially because Manumnabi is a cave not so far from Old Ebonheart, near the village of Felms Itul, right on the river Tyr. Cave entrance is well hidden between the rocks and the interior is surprisingly filled with Nyx hounds, including a unique extra-large Nyx mother who will offer a decent challenge, although shouldn't be a problem to a well-experienced adventurer. Cave used to be a smuggler's hideout before being overtaken by the beasts, so there will be plenty of bones laying around. None of them, however, belong to Constantius. But after slaying the Nyx mother and climbing a dangerously narrow path, we will eventually discover a treasure chest and a torn journal page. Sandas. 
Three days have passed since we lost track of the wretched mage Aramak. The trail has grown cold, but we shall not let this setback dampen our spirits. We have taken respite in this cave after my faithful companion Lenvin Barotar spotted it from the shore. Many Nyx hounds were slain. No longer shall they terrorize the farmers in this area. Shortly after settling down for a night, a figure approached our camp. It was a kindly pilgrim en route to Necrom. They had lost control of both arms in childhood accident and asked for company on their journey. I was more than happy to oblige. Also, I think the binding on these pages is failing. I knew I should have paid the extra few septims for quality glue. Signed, C. Alright, in a case that C stands for Constantius, this is our first clue in solving the mystery of Constantius's last journey. There are a few things to note from this single page. Firstly, Constantius isn't alone on this journey as he's traveling with a faithful companion, Lenvin, who, dare I say, must be in the superb scout for spotting the cave entrance from the shore, as it took me several in-game hours to find it myself. And they are now joined by a pilgrim traveling east. Secondly, they are after some mage named Aramak, and lastly, Nyx hounds seem to be really attached to this cave. Unfortunately, the name of their next location is unreadable, being that the paper is centuries old. All that is left now is return to Sharnoga with newly discovered evidence and hope that she may offer a solution. And indeed she will. Our next task is to visit the Imperial Library and see if someone over there can read Smudge the location. The person we are looking for is Capia Hegateria, an Imperial scribe, and turns out something of a scholar when it comes to Constantius's lore. The way she deciphers the note is at the same time hilarious and amazing. I just have to read it all. You must be the one Sharnoga was talking about. I heard you found something written by Constantius. I'd love to see it, let's see, based on the width of his lettering and the average spacing between letters, while tracing his estimate route through known areas existing in his lifetime, I'd say he was headed to Technila Shashulpi. It's east of here in a standard scar, lots of angry cultists, good luck. Someone give this woman a raise, she deserves every septum. And also she's absolutely right. Technola Shashulpi is our next destination, and it is epic as it sounds. Sundered Scar is a marshland along the southern coastline of the Inner Sea, and Technola Shashulpi isn't very difficult to find, considering its size. It's enormous, probably the largest Dejic ruin I've encountered so far, at least on the ground level. Its city size absolutely labyrinthian and infested with angry cultists and Daedra. What I found interesting is that it's dedicated to Azura, and you'd expect her worshippers to be slightly less aggressive, but nope, they all wanted me dead on sight. Also, Frost Atronax are everywhere. I think someone there has a serious thing going on for the Frost Atronax. However, me playing as a Nord, it's basically a walk in the park. Nords have 100% immunity to ice magic, so I literally use them to refresh myself. It's kinda hot and humid in the swamps. But once inside, things are a bit more serious, as there will be dangerous spellcasters as well as more Daedra, especially Winged Twilight, not surprisingly since they are messengers of Azura after all. There's plenty of loot inside, including ebony dagger, gemstones, gold, scrolls, and several skill books. However, the thing we are looking for is right here on the table, a second entry in a diary of a legendary hero. It reads, Tirdas. Another day of valorous combat slaying Daedra. The pilgrim has proved himself to be quite capable in combat. I was hesitant at first, what with their disability, but they seem to have learned a lot from years of training as a battle mage, so they say. They also say that Lenvin is secretly jealous of me and the name I've made for myself. I've certainly noticed Lenvin becoming more aggressive recently, but jealousy? I thought we were above petty squabbles like that. I feel like pounding his head against some rocks until he comes to his senses. We approach Necrom soon, just after a brief excursion into the Dwemer ruin to the northwest. Signed, C. So, we learn that Crippled Pilgrim is in fact a battle mage and not so defenseless. There is also this strange conflict arising between Constantius and Lanvin, and Sharnoga will, quite rightfully, find very suspicious, as if something was clouding Hero's mind. In any case, Sharnoga will reward us with an Amulet of Grey Tides, another unique item that can actually convert to either Amulet of Black Tides or Amulet of White Tides, depending on our choice, resulting in a different kind of enchantment. 
But with that said, we are ready to set on our final and longest journey. Based on the last note, only Dwemer ruin that fits this description is Mazungaleth, northwest of Necron. It's pretty far from old Ebonhard, luckily there are seal striders and boat services available, for those who don't feel like walking over there. As expected, ruins of Mazungaleft are filled with terrors and bodies of unfortunate adventurers. Various Dwemer constructs, including steam centurions and even a greater Dwarven Spectre, still roam the hallways. However, toughest opponent is found at the very end of the dungeon, in the form of an advanced steam centurion. Overall, I found Mezungleft most challenging out of all three locations that we have to explore in this story, which kinda makes sense being at the very end of the questline. But with some luck and effort, player will clear out the dungeon and finally in the very deepest chambers of the Dwarven Ruin, discover the remains of a famous long lost hero, Constantius, his famous axe, as well as the remains of his loyal companion, Lenvin. There is also a final note written in dried blood, apparently by dying Constantius. Betrayed by L, but I got L. So it seems that the stranger was right and Lenvin really grew envious and hateful towards Constantius. And eventually two faithful companions and friends ended each other. With this tragic discovery, our task is done and we can safely return to Sharnoga and bring her all the evidence, including the remains and still tanto used by Lenvin to murder Constantius. Sharnoga will say the following. Hmm, this is troubling. It appears as though Lenvin did kill Constantius, but this goes against everything I've heard for years. Constantius and Lenvin were kinsmen. There was never bad blood between them. There must be something more to this. I investigate their possible third companion and someone matching that description joined the Mages Guild many years ago. Investigate that lead. So Sharnoga suspects that there is more to this and honestly it's pretty obvious that mysterious third companion, a crippled battle mage, had to be involved somehow since all the troubles began upon their arrival. Following Sharnoga's lead, we are to visit the Mages Guild, located in the Market District. There, a high elf sorcerer, Selitara, will tell us about a mage named Kamara. Oh, you're the one who found him. Bravo, Sharnoga was here earlier asking about any mages with physical deformities. Of course there was. Kamara was one of the greatest mages the guild ever had. Incredibly prolific, and yet... The humblest mage you'd ever meet. I found a copy of Unfinished Draft recently, perhaps the beginning of a book that never got finished. Check the bookcases for an old rolled up scroll. Feel free to take it. The original is probably in a museum somewhere. And that scroll, found on a bookcase right behind Saitara, offers a final piece in the puzzle as it clearly describes the last days of Constantius. It turns out that the mysterious third companion was indeed Kamara, one of the greatest mages that guild ever had, at least according to Salitara. Kamara was especially interested in the school of illusion and, as we shall see, used Constantius and Lenvin as mere test subjects. Scroll is named Ruminations on Illusion and here's what Kamara has to say. Illusion magic is one of the most underutilized schools of magic in use today. These notes shall make apparent why that is a mistake. Now I'll skip to the part that deals with our case. In chapter 1 Frenzy, Kamara talks about the encounter with Constantius. Many years ago I had the good fortune to encounter many test subjects on my travels throughout Morrowind. While most were native, the subjects spanned the breadth of Tamriel's races. One should note that frenzy spells are subject to the target's racial inclination to magicka. Those with a natural weakness such as Altmer are much more susceptible to frenzy than orcs. This goes against one's natural assumption that the more violent or excitable races would be more likely to frenzy. Another interesting and poorly understood trait is the ability to build up frenzy over time. Long before I joined the guild, I was traveling with two barbaric thugs in Morrowind. Rather than ending our uneasy relationship with a simple fireball, I chose to use the occasion for an experiment. Their aggression and distrust towards each other grew and grew until they ended each other almost simultaneously. Their contribution towards the school of illusion magic will not be forgotten. And there we have it. Legendary hero Constantius and his faithful companion Lenvin used as test subjects as a mere experiment by a mage until they murdered each other under the effect of a powerful frenzy spell. Even Salitara, who just moments ago praised Kamara as one of their best mages and scholars, will find this story disheartening. You see, 
she thought it's just some illustrative exaggeration on Kamara's behalf, asking us to not spread the news around for the sake of Guild's reputation. And as tragic as it sounds, this discovery in a way provides the good ending, as names of Constantius and Lenwin are restored and cleared from any dishonest act. Simply there was no treason or animosity between them. It was all a doing of an evil mage. Sharnoga will be finally satisfied as well. Ah, they were frenzied. I knew something sounded wrong. Kamara used them as test subjects. The poor fools never knew what was happening until it was too late. Kamara is long dead and their crimes must go unpunished. Such is life. All that matters now is that Lenvin and Constantius will be properly buried as the heroes they were. In lieu of traditional payment, I'm giving you Constantius' axe. Hopefully downstairs should have it back in a perfect condition by now. Thank you. With these words, our quest for a famous long lost hero Constantius has ended. And all that is left really is heading downstairs for our ultimate reward. A legendary axe. Sweet Skoma. Now, upon discovering Constantius, his axe was simply known as Ancient Adamantium Axe, with pretty average, if not disappointing stats. So at first, I naturally wasn't that excited about it. Also, my favorite weapons were long blades and hammers, and the only reason I even used axes on this playthrough was due to playing as a default knight class. I obviously love playing knights, and it always bothered me that Morrowind's knight class has an axe skill paired with a long blade. Well, let's just say that this quest changed everything. You see, once we head downstairs to talk to Ophelie, who runs the armory, she will say the following. So, you're the one who found this beauty. I had it in the forge thinking it was unsalvageable. But as soon as you talk to Sharnoga upstairs, the weapon surged back to life. I've never seen anything like it before. It seems to respond to various adverse magic effects you take. May it serve you as it served Constantius. And here it is, the ultimate weapon known as Unending. And the stats are ridiculous. Condition 3000, chop damage 15 to 65 and a value of 5000 septums. Let's just say that it carried me all the way through almost making the game too easy. This axe will one shot pretty much all common enemies. And even when I faced more dangerous foes like Telvanni wizards, I'd finish them before they could even cast a single spell, due to its almost bizarre speed. It truly saved my life in more than one occasion. What's interesting is that there is definitely something magical or unnatural about it, although it's not enchanted. An ending seems to have a will of its own, something that is actually not so rare in Elder Scrolls universe, with all the Daedric and Adric artifacts that seemingly move around on their own. And Unending has that touch of mystique and elegance. It really is a fitting reward for successfully completing a search for a legendary hero. In the end, I'd like to share some final thoughts. I already mentioned that the questline is a full package, meaning it has all those fun elements that make an interesting storyline like memorable characters, exploration, mystery plot, nice reward. There's something truly satisfying about undoing an ancient evil and bringing justice to someone from a distant past. The questline doesn't have a main antagonist, as the mage Kamara died long time ago, thus never facing the justice for all the evil they did during lifetime. And then there's this common trope of warriors fighting mages of all kinds, magic versus a sword. Through the notes we discover that Constantius is after an unknown evil mage Aramak, and his ultimate demise is by the hands of another mage, Kamara. On the other hand, Kamara described Constantius and his friend as mere barbaric thugs. Which obviously couldn't be further from the truth. Those few pages we get to read are enough to portray Constantius as a true hero on a never-ending crusade against evil, providing help to everyone along the journey. For example, he takes pride in slaying a den of Nyx hounds who terrorize the local farmers. Also, worthy of mentioning are all the minor characters involved in this saga, starting of course with poor Aurelia Draconis. I cared about her character, as she seemed totally innocent and oblivious to the things happening around her, and I honestly love that game offers an option to actually help her. After safely escorting Aurelia to Dondril, she even tells us that she will be taken good care of by the local Dunmer, who will eventually transport her to Roa Deer. 
a large Indrel chapel, or characters like a small-time smuggler Ginur Dolvi, or a scholar Kapia Hegateria who helped us deciphering one of the notes. All these characters added so much flavor to the overall story. Of course, Sharnoga as the main quest giver with a personal interest in the legend of Constantius played a large role. What I especially loved about her character is the participation. You see, oftentimes Morwin NPCs will simply stand around and give orders, expecting us to do all the job. Not Sharnoga though. Each time we complete a stage within the storyline, Sharnoga will comment about her own investigation. Meaning that, in our absence, she would actually go and talk to people, often leading us to the next person of interest. It's a really nice way of making the quest seem more dynamic, with other characters being more actively involved. So with everything said, this was my analysis of one of my favorite quest lines in Tamriel Rebuilt. There's actually plenty of other interesting stories to be found as well, and I may cover them as well in future. In any case, thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.